and welcome back to Heiner Builds Your Ride. Uh, this time we've got an Isuzu D-Max that we've kitted out together with Pro Camp Solutions again. There was some stuff on this car before, so it hasn't all been done by us, but the whole battery energy system has been done by us. So uh, these lights were on before, the UHF was on here before, but what we've done is we rewired the battery section. It looked uh, a bit messy. So we've added wiring for the DC hub in the back. We've rewired the ARB compressor under the bonnet. The battery terminal looked pretty shot, so we've cleaned it all up. We've added a new battery as well. Uh, we've added a Sentry Overlander 4x4 battery, a twin MIDI fuse holder under the bonnet here for all our accessories. And then we've got six BNS cable running to the back and eight BNS cable running to the ARB single piston compressor. Uh, that's really all that we've done in the front. The more exciting stuff is towards the back here. So in here we've got a travel buddy, really nicely inlaid by Pro Camp Solutions. Rob has done a great job on this, so easily accessible right here. They could really do with the K-on trace, it makes the travel buddy so much better. And then we've got the 1240D DC-DC charger here from Red Arc that is hooked up to the Egan DC hub. So you got all your circuits accessible here. This is pretty much the electrical area. Easily accessible so that just in case a fuse blows or you want to check the system, this is only the spot that you have to go to. Everything interconnects here. Uh, we've also got a 1200 watt Victron inverter with the power board. This is on Velcro quite tough velcro actually but if you want to you can unzip it here put it on the top put it under the travel buddy put it on the side here so the customer can decide where he wants it there's a bit of spare length in there for it you control the whole thing from the back here uh, there is also a water tank that the guys from pro camp solutions have put in and a water pump what we have done is uh, we added our Klarman uh, five gang switch panel. There's two spare switches in here that can be used for whatever the customer might come up with in the future. You can switch the water pump on. You've got your outlet right here for the water pump. You can also turn the inverter on from here. You will see on the power board, we get an LED coming on once the inverter is on. And that's your controls, that's all your switches on the side here. You've also got a National Lunar Light, the same one that we use all the time, right up here. Uh, and that is obviously orange, and then when you hold it for a little bit longer, it turns to white. Uh, my favorite setting on this is actually the first stage like this, in orange. It might not look like a lot right now, but once you're in the dark, in the bush, it will light up this whole area. And even though you can hardly see it from there, as soon as you go down like this, you can see the light. So it will still lighten up this whole area here. There's more stuff that we've actually put behind the fridge on this one. So you can pull out the fridge. It's a customer fridge that he's brought in. And you've got more storage space underneath here. So you've got a chopping board that you can obviously move around or take out. Rob makes these and he's really nicely put the whole drawer system together. We put more stuff on the back of it. So the drawer doesn't go in all the way. It's a little bit shorter than the whole drawer system itself is. That leaves us room to put the battery in there. We've got uh, the Victron shunt in there from the BMV 712 smart monitor. So you've got Bluetooth connectivity as well. So while you're driving, you can have an app running on your phone where you can actually see the charge rate, state of charge, voltages, time to go, and so on and so forth, all the battery information. And the main fuses, a twin ANL fuse holder, are right in there as well. Obviously, you get another drawer here this is also where we got the oh a knot 
the water outlet. So you can plug that into your water connection here. And then all you need to do is just press the trigger. Or if you want it on constantly, you just lift it off a little bit and put it to the side like that and the water will just keep flowing out. Very handy because when you're cooking, you can just have this thing set up here or on your fridge. You just have to make sure you don't pull it too far, otherwise it goes off. So you got a long drawer in here as well to store all your bits and pieces. Some more storage space there. You see the water tank right back there. And in here, we've got our Victron battery monitor that I just talked about. You have got two accessory sockets on the bottom and two twin USB charge points right here. So this we call the charging station. Uh, apart from that, to recharge, we have put a 200 watt Red Arc solar panel on the roof here. Uh, we made that with extra thick brackets to make sure it's really sturdy. So we got 50 by 53 mil angle and we bolt through the side of the solar panel and then we bolt through the load bars just to make sure it's really heavy duty. It probably stiffened the whole back construction up just by having that panel on there now. And uh, we've also added some work lights for the customer. So he's got two rear facing Rock 20 lights from Lightforce and he's got two side facing lights as well. These can be swiveled a bit depending on what the customer likes. So he can swivel these 45 degrees forwards, these 45 degrees to the sides and he would almost get 360 degree light from it, obviously, except for the front, so more 270. But these are really handy if you drive on a track in the middle of the night and it's really pitch black dark, as soon as you drive past an obstacle with your front lights, you can't see anything out of the side windows anymore. You usually can't see anything behind you either. So these lights here are controllable from the cab with uh, some switches that we put into the dash. So if you drive a track at night, you can turn these on, shining slightly forwards, which will then light up that whole area. So it means once you pass an obstacle and you're not sure how far away you still are from that dip that you don't want to drop into, you can actually just look out of the window and you see just as much as it was daylight. Plus, with the lights on in the back, you can also use your rear view mirrors because you can still see what's happening behind you. Switches for the work lights are right here. So we got left, rear and right. These were actually supplied by the customer. I have to say I really like those switches. I haven't seen them before, but they're quite cool switches. And that's almost it. You can turn the compressor on and off from here. That obviously only works with accessories because it's running off the start battery. If you have got a compressor running off a lithium battery, you don't need to have the car on. The lithium battery can quite easily handle a compressor by itself, but he prefers to have the compressor under the bonnet so it only runs with the engine on best. And I think that's about it that we've done on this one. Just to shine the spotlight on some of the wiring, what we've also got here is we've got a solar input, so the customer can connect a solar blanket, just leave this side open, or when it's raining, just close it like that, the cable would easily come through. And I personally prefer to have my solar connection inside the vehicle so it doesn't corrode that easily, because especially with using a solar blanket, you do not leave the solar blanket when you wanna lock the car because it's just too valuable and too easy to steal. So it's a lot better solution, I think, to have the solar connector inside because if it is raining, you can just close it enough that the rain doesn't come in. And if you, if you wanna leave for whatever reason, you'll pack it all up, put it inside and then lock everything anyway. We've also got a 12 volt output here for the travel buddy. And what we do with the travel buddy, we usually change them to an Anderson plug because the plug that you get on the travel buddy tends to melt. It's that old style Hella slash Merit plug and it doesn't cope with the current of the travel buddy over a long period of time. So usually after, after cooking for two, three hours at a time, what happens is the plug gets so hot that the plastic of the plug 
gets hot as well and it just slightly squeezes the fuse holder apart and an open circuit and the travel body doesn't work anymore. So we put a Anderson plug on and we put an Anderson plug connector in here. That's how the travel body is connected. And another thing I like to point out here is the wiring on the roof. If you want to have a look here, all the wiring is going through an IP67 rated waterproof gland. The cables are heat shrunk so the water can't get in through the gland which makes sure that we don't get any water ingress into the canopy and then because we put the solar panel on we use the side of the solar panel to run the cables from the front to the back and then the load bars to run the cables across means if you look from the side it makes for a very neat install and you don't have any cables floating around underneath the solar panel that was the walkthrough I think uh, the only thing left now is uh, put the drawers back in. Disconnect the shower. Give it our patch of approval. This one's now ready to drive anywhere. Thank you and see you for the next one.